Hello everyone, welcome to this video on basic concepts of hypothesis testing. Here we will discuss what a hypothesis is all about and the prerequisites to actually doing a hypothesis test. So what is hypothesis? It is actually a belief about some population parameter like mean, proportion, variance, etc. It is a part of inferential statistics. Let's understand it pictorially. We have a population and a belief that the mean age of this population would be around 45 years. We then pull out a random sample and find that the mean age is actually 18. Oh no, it's way too distant from what we had assumed. We have to reject our hypothesis. Remember, a hypothesis must be stated before analysis. Let's look at a few real-life examples of hypothesis here. Mean height of graduate students differ from 100 inches. Standard deviation of their height is less than 3 inches. Male and female students differ in weight. All three of these are hypotheses or assumptions about a population parameter. A hypothesis test examines two opposing hypotheses about a population the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Null hypothesis is a statement being tested. It is the initial claim. Alternative hypothesis is a statement that we might believe to be true or hope to prove true. A null hypothesis is denoted by H sub 0 and an alternative hypothesis is denoted by H sub 1. A null hypothesis always has an equality sign equal to, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to. On the contrary, an alternative hypothesis can never have an equality sign. It could be not equal to, less than, or greater than. An important point to remember here is that how we set up these hypotheses depends on what we are trying to show. Let's look at an example to see the difference between H sub 0 and H sub 1. We need to determine if a population mean mu is equal to some target value mu0. Here null hypothesis that is h sub 0 is mu is equal to mu0. Alternative hypothesis h sub 1 could be mu less than mu0, mu greater than mu0 or mu is not equal to mu0. Let's delve a little more into null and alternative hypothesis. Given any scenario how do we identify h sub 0 and h sub 1? This is of utmost importance as this forms the basis of our testings. What we need to do here is state the original claim symbolically, state the opposite of the original claim symbolically. We know that a null hypothesis always has an equal sign. Hence, the claim with the equal sign will be the null hypothesis. This is absolutely true in academics when we go by the books. However, when we do process improvement projects, we can decide H sub 0 and H sub 1 on our own. Remember, we always test the null hypothesis. There is H sub 0. Now, let's look at the reject and fail to reject a null hypothesis concept. H sub 0 and H sub 1 actually work in conjunction. If we reject H0, we automatically accept H1. And if we fail to reject H0, we fail to accept H1. Super important to know here is that if we want to prove a statement true, we must state it as H1 or the alternative hypothesis. You would be surprised to know now that hypothesis tests are never 100% certain. There is always a chance of error. There are two possible types of errors, commonly known as type 1 error and type 2 error. Let's look at some important details now. We have two dimensions, reality, where null hypothesis is true and alternative hypothesis is true, and decision dimension where we reject null hypothesis and we do not reject null hypothesis. Rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true is type 1 error, denoted by alpha, and fail to reject the null hypothesis when it is false is type 2 error, denoted by beta. Reject null hypothesis when alternative hypothesis is true, and do not reject null hypothesis when null hypothesis is true are the other two situations. Type 1 error 
typically takes values of 0.05 or 0.01 across industries. Type 2 error value is typically 0.20. Alpha is also known as the level of significance. An alpha value of 0.05 means that we are willing to accept a 5% chance that we are wrong when we reject the null hypothesis. We can use a lower alpha value to lower this risk. However, we will be less likely to detect a true difference if one exists at all. Beta is the power of the test. A test with enough power can decrease the risk of committing a type 2 error. We can do this by ensuring a large enough sample size. Another thing to remember before we conclude this discussion is that type 1 error is also known as producer's risk and type 2 error is known as consumer's risk. Remember, we cannot reduce both the errors simultaneously. Let's look at another important concept now, the decision rules. These are rules for rejecting the null hypothesis. There are two types of decision rules. First, with reference to the p-value, which is a probability that measures the evidence against the null hypothesis. Its value obviously ranges from 0 to 1. Good to know at this point that lower probabilities will provide stronger evidence against the null hypothesis. If p-value is less than or equal to alpha, we reject the null. If p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null. Second category of the decision rule is with reference to a region of acceptance. This region is actually a range of values under the normal curve. If the test statistic falls in this region, H0 is not rejected. If the test statistic falls outside this region, there is a region of rejection, then H0 is rejected. Let's look at a normal curve below to get a visual understanding. This is the normal curve and here we have the acceptance region. The region of rejection is on the two tails. Since we are talking about tails, let's quickly look at what are one tail and two tailed hypothesis tests. In a one tailed test, region of rejection is on one side of the sampling distribution, whereas on a two tailed test, it is on both sides of the distribution. Here are the examples for both. Referring to the examples above, for a one-tailed test, region of rejection would be on the right tail, whereas for a two-tailed test, it will be on both the tails. Here is a visual representation of the same. So now we are equipped with the prerequisites to hypothesis testing. Let's quickly look at the steps involved in doing an hypothesis test. Broadly, there are six steps. First one is specify the hypothesis, both null and alternative hypothesis. Then we need to determine the power and sample size for the test. So what is this power now? Well, the probability of not committing a type 2 error is called the power of a hypothesis test. The third step is to choose a significance level or the alpha level. Then we collect the data. Then we compare the p-value from the test to the significance level. And finally, we need to decide whether to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. So these were the broad steps involved in hypothesis testing. However, you should know that there are different types of hypothesis tests we do. And in our future videos, you will get to see how we apply these steps on those different types of hypothesis tests. Thank you so much for your time today to watch this video. I would request you to please take a moment to think. Hypothesis testing is one of the most important topics in statistics and has great applicability in business decision making. If there is anything that you want to know more about, anything that is coming to your mind, please note it down immediately. You can either post your query or feedback in the comment section or get in touch with me on LinkedIn. 
Please subscribe to stay updated on future videos to connect the dots in the hypothesis testing story. Well, before I leave, let me tell you that my hypothesis is that most of our esteemed viewers will be waiting for the next videos on hypothesis testing. Most means greater than 50%. So try formulating the null and the alternative now. Good luck and see you soon. Bye-bye.